Welcome back to the Amazon European Master, where LDLC stay undefeated in the tournament. And Goldborg, I have to ask you the question: How's your prediction going? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I went three and two, okay. So so far, there we is got the room. one for LDLC, okay. And you know what I always say: when you're the loser coming into a best of five, you actually have the luxury luxury of knowing that on what to improve on. You know what mistakes you made. Where the winning team, they're like, well, let's just try and do the same. So if the losing team finds the winning formula, well, then all of a sudden. It bounces back. It, it looked pretty good for X7 in, in the early game. It, it, it looked okay in the early game. I think the, the agency was on them to make it happen. I mean, if you look at the draft of LDLC, they're completely fine with the game going 40, 50, 60 minutes. That's actually what they drafted for. Yeah. In the end, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive to see how LDLC weathered that early game storm and then close out the game so fast because you just lose two, three big fights and the game was already over. Yeah, because talking about that draft, I want to dive into that, uh, Dino. There's a, a certain remark you made about the last pick from LDLC. Yeah. So what we've seen so far uh, in the group stage is that LDLC, they like to go uh, mid, AD carry and jungle in the first rotation. The only thing, that, the only moment they actually diverted from that is when Bisons did something really weird in draft. And again here, it's uh, a bit weird. They, they see champions pop up that they haven't seen before. Even though they see Nocturne Vex, they decide to wait on Ica's pick and they decide to, to keep it for the last speak as they did against Bisons, then it was an Oriana, now it comes out to the Vegar, and that Vegar was a huge ticket to their composition. And I actually think it was such a good thing to do, again, a composition you see over on this side of X7, because on the first three picks, you kind of get the idea that, okay, this is all going to be about the backline dive coming in. You have the Vex, you have the Nocturne, keep it simple, hold, your, hold yourself in there. But then all of a sudden, it gets a little bit disjointed with the composition. You have something where you want to kite a little bit, you want to uh, come in with the h as well, who's very low range, and then the Vega just comes in with the event of ice and then will disrupt that. So you get this scenario where two members will jump in, Vega sets the cage down, and all of a sudden, Jinx, Yumi, unless she's on the Ve uh, unless she's on the Nocturne and h just really get to play the fight. Yeah. So I thought it was a bit disjointed. Now, I do want to have a look at that Nocturne from Haru, because Haru, especially in that early game, which we already touched upon, is like, he was so, you know, he was there. He was everywhere, it seemed. He needed to be. And and the beautiful thing is, like, they, they know that uh, they have the tendency on the side of LDLC that if they can pick up the Herald, they will. And they actually timed this engage perfectly. I do think LDLC could have executed a little bit better on the defense here. But in the end, Haru and Jaeger get the job done. And that's the most important part because suddenly the Nocturne was alive. It's the thing we see from them all the time. And even the way that the way this way ga this game went and even how we saw that Yikes started taking over, it was still Haru in the early game who had Yikes' number. He was up in the jungle camps. He was up in the levels after this as well, and it seemed like the proactivity that this composition required was initially there, but then they started maybe becoming a little too proactive. Yeah, because it's, it's crazy. There's actually one fight in particular, uh, Dino, that led uh, LDLC to victory. It's it's a pretty big fight that they had in the middle of the lane. I I, I do think that uh, in general for LDLC it was uh, the the point to weather the storm, and I don't think the storm from X7 was harsh enough for them to be actually disjointed. I mean, in if you look at how they played the game, for some reason LDLC they they weather LFL teams. They play against teams like a Vitality B and a BDS Academy. If you don't get them behind far enough, they're always still in the game. And for some reason, they were still even in gold. Yeah, let's um, break that play down, wouldn't we? I think it's 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 worthy of breaking down. Uh, it's it's a play that happened in the middle of the game. And the, the important part to think about this play is how we got there. Because we just saw the clips uh, from Haru uh, on his Nocturne trying to actually get the game open in a way that their their team needs because they have the agency if they w want to go for the engage. Uh, while I'm waiting for the proper play to load, uh, you will see that uh, they have a Nocturne and a Yumi. And what happened before the play actually happened is that a um, minute 1430-ish, they actually sat in the mid lane uh, trying, trying to uh, attack the mid lane, but it didn't really work out how they wanted to. They were just waiting on the sides. And what happened then is they reset. They went to buy items because they really wanted this play to work. And I also really we want this play to work, so we're working on actually changing out the clips. The important part to note here is that you see uh, right now that Yike and Ike are clearing vision, but Doz is moving up from the minimap and he's actually moving across vision. X7 still want to execute on Ike, that's the target. They want this Vegar down, but they just can't. They just have, they don't have enough in the tank, and that's when LDLC comes com uh, comes online because they have amazing disengage. They have a Zin Zhao. They they have something like a Rakan. If you go in and you don't get the kills, if you burn your flash. On the Vex just to engage on this champion and you don't kill him, then the play is lost. And this is a big turning point for LDLC in the game, and that's how they actually got it done. Was it maybe a bit too greedy? It, 
I think they really wanted to play. I think they telegraphed to play, and that's an issue. Like, they were there before, and then LDLC wasn't ready, and by the time they actually pulled the trigger, LDLC was in position. So the way I really see this play coming out, it's just really how the composition functioned. Like, you have one side of the coin, which is that we have the backline dive, we need to be the one making the play. And you have the other side of the coin, which is LDLC, that we need to kite back, we need to come in with the disengage, and just as Dino showed on the Telestrator, it becomes very difficult when enemy champions already have their account, they already have the Sensao, loads of disengage in this kit, they don't have to be the aggressor, they can kite back. And I say, think you see the difficulties as well from the X7 composition when you point it into and against the LDLC composition. So I think the draft was, in the end, just too hard to play, and LDLC, they had some really good adaptations where we just saw it in that play, how it functions. And that's what we L praise LDLC for as well, Hadani. You said that in the pre-show. LDLC always knows what you're going to do, what your next move is going to be. It's, it's a draft I really expected from LDLC. Even trading the, the Aphelios for the Jinx in the bot lane, they, they like to look a little bit at what you're going to bring in the best of five and then adapt. But the problem is, even though they had a slower draft, they still won pretty fast. And this is a big issue for X7. If they execute like this on this draft, they can take over the series. Look at that damage from Asin Sao! Like from Yike <laughs> as well! Can we talk about that? Yike had the most damage in the game in a composition where he's the disengager together with the other champions usually like this, you play around the Aphelius. We see the Aphelius have the highest damage percentage or the Vega because of how he functions, but <laughs> it just explains the skirmishing style we see from LDLC. It's so much about coming together around Yag, and we were highlighting it in the pregame as well. This is a guy two years ago who was just chilling in some other European regional leagues. Then he was in French second division. Now he's here, and he just keeps performing against the likes of Haro, who's a former world champion. And not only Yag, I think we also have to talk about Aika in this case as well. I mean, Aika was the, the the man who couldn't be killed. It, it, it's it's cool to see that they, they actually, Ica pulled the Vagar bands in the beginning of the group stage, never showed it, and then this first game of a best of five, they're like, okay, we're just gonna wait, we'll see what you actually draft. The entire comp, Vagar is the angle. And it was the angle, because you, you can see, like, the, you could even build this champion a little bit more tanky because you're scaling on the AP, and they even got didn't get him down on one or two items. So, very well played from that mid-jungle, from, uh, from LDLC, and it's so important against X7 that your mid-jungle is performing well. Yeah, with that, I want to round out game one. Looking at game two, X7 has chosen red side. Um, what are you hoping to see from them? I think they definitely want some more stable solo lane options as well. I think if you get your bot lane in a position where they won't get to be too killed either, that also helps immensely. Um, this, to me, was a very disjointed X7 composition that we don't usually see. They do either two things, right? The thing where we just say, okay, we're playing for side lanes. Uh, Jaeger on a, on a champion like the Akali. Or they just go, let's play the stable team fighting. This one was a little something we hadn't seen before. I wanted to keep it simple. The early facilitation for Haro, Javan, Volibear, the things we know them for. The question is, can the NLC champions strike back in game two? It's time to get into picks and bans with our casters. Thank you again, Coolian and crew. Um, interesting thoughts there from the desk. Gulborg well, saying he thought that was a, perhaps a little bit of a non-X7 style draft. Well, you know, I mean, if it is going to be Strikes Back, that means that that game was a new hope, and, stri and you know, and Strikes Back was the better movie, so I'm <laughs> expecting a better showing from X7 in this one. But, I mean... <laughs> Whatever, Should okay, Seg Segways, Seg Segways and all the rest of it aside, I do think that X7, again, have to really hammer home how they had a certain checklist for the early game. They only got it about half done, wasn't quite done there. The storm was not quite stormy enough. LDLC <laughs> got to that point where they just managed to get to the point where they could fight and fight off the dives. Yeah, and honestly, um, I have a few question marks where it comes to, you know, looking at the bot lane for X7, especially we've seen Nata with a few whoopsies, a few mispositions, and right here it's mostly on Nata because Kasing, he's playing Yumi. There's only you so much to you can you navigate. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There's only so much you can navigate into the game, but there were like two crucial mistakes from Nata overextending a little bit. He gets punished in the lane. Uh, they get the two v two kill onto Nata, and then the game breaking fight where. 3v5 is very difficult. We mentioned how DLC later on in the game. You can't really beat them in their own game. But now the sides have been swapped. And traditionally, LDLC would most likely go for a Viego blue pick, yeah. uh, B1 pick, because it's something that they prioritize heavily, especially knowing that X7 plays heavy dive. Worth pointing out, of course, the last time uh, out, we saw X7 ban away the Ari from Ica, but there is a world where you ban it again and say, okay, well, if you don't have that option, you won't be able to go towards that Viego Ari combo. They can first pick the Viego here, should they so wish. And it's certainly something we've seen from them before. Hovering, of course, 
the uh, ever-present Rengar, which has been a bit of a hover for a few of these teams around okay. about, but there is that Ari first Strap yourselves in. Uh, another offering has been made to the Shrine of Ari, uh, which I am very, very excited for. Uh, uh, where do I, I, I leave from? Uh, no, get, get that way. Yeah, so, so, I'm, I'm looking, looking at the exit. Stage. But I, Sorry, I do guys. think that um, my only opinion... Being an Ari main in this split, being a caster has <laughs> Go been... On. It has been a quite sad experience. There have been some less good games. I do think, though, the caveat there is that LFL teams really play the pick quite well. LDLC, when they played this, have played it pretty well. Kamin Core, also another team which I look at and say, hey, this is someone that this is the champion that they can pilot very, very effectively. So even though this is a blind pick, even though you don't know the exact role it's going to have in the composition, I trust LDLC to get more than other teams to craft something around okay. it. Ooh, I was about to say here, you either take the Viego or you take the Javan yourself. But the problem is playing Javan into the Ari is a little bit difficult, but you also want to take it away because your ADC is playing Jinx. And it's just really difficult to play into the Javan when you play Jinx. But from what I'm seeing right now, X7 are changing their gears completely. They're the ones going towards the more kiting composition, playing back, trying to go for resets. Both Viego and Jinx are great when it comes down to resets. And I'm expecting that you pick this to take away the Viego, one. And two, you most likely already know what you play in the mid lane, which is going to be Tencel Monk. Sure enough. And of course, you know, we have seen a fair amount of versatility from the side of X7 across EU Masters thus far. We've seen crazy Soraka bots with full heal comps. We've seen Diana Yasuo. We saw what we saw last game. Like, we have seen some versatility from them, so I'm not entirely surprised to see them shifted up entirely. Nope. LDLC, though, they've got X kick back on that Aphelios, which he was very comfortable on the last game. They're thinking about a Shen here, which would be interesting, but it's not. It's only a hover right now, so we'll wait and see whether it's more like the hey, Orn, which, of course, it. is a song pick for Ragnar. Don't, don't break it. Broke. <laughs> and this is feeling pretty standard for them right now. Okay, Ooh, so ah. that's a little bit different. So now X7 say, okay, we tried the whole diving thing. That didn't work quite as well, and I do think actually... Copy their homework just don't make it, it very obvious. Don't make it so <laughs> obvious. But I think what X7 do now is they control areas very, very well. You know that if you are going to dive into this trio, very, very dangerous, much like what LDLC actually ended up uh, eventually crafting in their composition in that last game. I do think an important factor of that last game, though, is that even though Ragnar fell behind a little bit, X7 really never turned the screws any further than just the first play or mm -hmm. two. The Orn got to survive, got to have those Call of the Forge gods, which were very important in catching out, like Nata, who went up into that river that one time where he got caught out. Out, which led to the huge snowball from LDLC. So Ragnar kind of saying, look, you tried to shut me down that last game, didn't work. I'm going to pick something which is always going to be high value if I'm not completely shut out of that game. Let's see if you can do it in game two. All right. Well, we've got ourselves some lock-ins right now. We've still Three got to pick up... Three of them a team, in fact. Yeah, well done. Yes, that's exactly what we have. But we've still got to pick up a jungler for Yike, who's not picked one up as yet. And we've still got supports to think about here as well. I was about to say that Yike is about to play his first unique champion... Uh, out of Kha'Zix, Viego, Javan, and Zinzao. He will play his first unique right now, and we're wondering what this one is going to be, because there is not much left on the table when it comes to, like, the top S tier mm. junglers, and he has pulled out the Kha'Zix, so there might be more, uh, more of spice. that fun stuff. Indeed. Exactly, more of the spice coming in. Now, the question is, if that's not a Renata... Ban, which it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. go, I'm what do you to, know? I'm going to default to my thoughts saying Kasing probably on Rakan. He has a 100% win uh. rate in the NOC. He provides great disengage, great engage together with the Viego as well. You can actually use it as a tool to go in. But the thing is... You can also Nautilus. You yeah. could because you've seen you've seen uh, the top lane. But I would say that maybe it's more valuable to go right here for your support to not okay. get their account taken away. But it's not going to be the case. Okay, so this is a different thing. This is the Scion, which is likely going towards that top lane. And this is what X7 smashed. And like, no, no, like, go for no, it, go no for underselling it, go on that. Go for it. All of those big adjectives uh, against Carving Core. They had zero kills in that game, 13 to zero in the scoreline. And it was Jaeger on the Scion, eventually getting towards a hole breaker, and no one could displace that champion in the side lane. Now you have uh, an Orn, you have a Lee Sin, which are trying I to fight against the this Lee champion. Sin. <laughs> the, the Lee Sin is, is, is the last one I saw on that table because you, you, with Ari Lee Sin, very high tag access, potential to kill someone like the Vega if they step out of position too. But how are you going to deal with the Scion? If you get up to two, two items on that Scion with a hole breaker, with, with whatever else at that point, Point, and they get ahead of that curve. One kill early in this game. Well, it didn't work out for the Aatrox. Was there it is. The last time. There it it's is. It's going to be very, <laughs> so, very difficult. To I those at home. Say, Brom makes so much sense here. You've got one, <laughs> two, three melee champions playing into you. Brom is really favored when he plays against melee bot lanes as well. Leona's going to be walking into you. Yeah, you're not into, into you. a chance. So Nata either. gets the passive uh, popped really easily. And then later on, the problem that you mentioned was the Call of the Forts gods from the Orn. This is going to get blocked by Kasing's uh, shield. Absolutely, and good to hear that from the comp. Bit of fun behind the scenes knowledge there as well. The Pantheon Hover is a shout out to the NLC host Archeron, of course. 
Katarina. Trouble is a Katarina. Why didn't they say, hover the Ari? Yeah, well, yeah. well just, that might be because listen, it's locked in right over there. I'm just going to say, Katarina hovers have a 100% win rate so far. That's it. In this tournament. That's we won't it. mention Your power in this, in this tournament. Are not to be trifled with. Um, we've seen the drafts here. It's a very different look again from X7. You called out the sign. The Vagar is this time in the hands of Tempt. LDLC, though, a bit more playmaking, but still a similar kind of team fight comp with mm. a bit more pick. But when LDLC lost domestically, my read on that was that they had a team which didn't just kind of by default win the later the game went on, and then they didn't have the aggressive nature to really get ahead of the curve to secure their own strength later into that game. I think this might be more along that sort of lines. I think when you got the five money from X7, which are very happy to go into that late game, maybe this is preying on some of LDLC's few weaknesses they've shown elsewhere. <laughs> I think right here we sort of like swap the two teams if you Indeed. take the nameplates off. But I'm going to put the nameplates back on because we are heading onto the reef for the second game in this best of five series between LDLC and X7. Initialize, I yoinked your job right there. You did. That's fine. I I'll forgive you this time. It's going right, to be okay. Uh, it's in your name to be trouble to me. I already had this problem. Again, <laughs> I'm casting with my brother and a woman named Trouble. It was always going to be an experience. What do you know? Um, I'm going to take the second, though, because obviously the last game we didn't really get a chance because it exploded into fights as we brought the graphic up. But Tempt versus Ica was a matchup we were very excited for. And then that last game, we saw some good stuff from Tempt early, but then Ica just went off on the Vega. Okay, but speaking of that Vega and stuff, obviously there is going to be the Predator on this Vega, which gives you a little more ability to roam towards those side lanes and get to that play a little quicker. Another thing that's very important to note is, of course, an exhaust coming in for the Braum. So you're looking to play a lot more passively on the back foot towards bot lane, and bot lane and just say, look, if you're trying to fight us, you're not getting through the Braum, you're not going to get that first person diving in. And if you've got that Predator who is going to use that uh, very, very well in terms of to get to that play, just say, look, we're buying time with the exhaust to get the Predator to come there quicker. X7, again, I can see how they're looking they to play around bot side. They've oh, they just found not. it. There they we go. Not. They do get a hold of that one. It's a late invade. Have to see whether it'll come and defend it. Yike has rotated down towards it, so it will be a fight for the level one. But this is into Braum. I don't know how much LDS it wants, but look, well, maybe if you bring as well. the whole team, maybe Absolutely. if you bring the whole team, it will work. Because Vegas not mid lane. Braum. All right, Ragnar is going to be there. They'll get that knock up, though. What a stun. And Tempt is going to come through on the end of this because Singh may need to flash. Does get over the wall. Flash for flash right now. And everyone survives. Red buff is successfully defended. Teleport top so from what, Ragnar. So what's blown here? Because we have one flash from the side of DOS. We have Ragnar's teleport. And on the other side, we have Kasing's flash and Haru's flash. But the good news, if you're, if you're an X7 fan, is that Haru is pathing top side and Ragnar does not have his teleport up and available so maybe we could potentially see shenanigans where you punish the own and you get him super far behind in lane which is what you mentioned happened mm. in that Kamen Corp game where the Scion completely snowballed out of control but I feel like the most important thing to keep in mind is that when you're playing in that 1v1 matchup in the jungle where somebody's playing listen into you you want to be able to make the plays right losing your flash and leon early on for haru it's going to be the gold button for yike to try and find him okay, in the jungle. i really want to zero back in on what could happen top lane because Lee Sin has the option to go red raptors gromp they have the quicker level three they get towards top side quicker you don't have the option of skipping as many camps as the viego and that's why yike is currently just a few seconds ahead of uh, their opposing number and Aika with that Ooh. Maprio early on gets to get some vision on the other side. Things are by seeing him not doing Raptors, you still know his, break, his pathing by process elimination. Stun from Doss trying to keep Exic alive because that was a passive, very nearly stopped. But the Witch Spike will now land onto Doss, who gets stunned up. But it's just health bars being traded. Look top, Nothing look much top, more. Look and then top. top side, indeed. There is Yike. Ike is roaming as well. Haru is still on this rub buff, secures it, will now be spotted out. And that means that Yike is given free reign to go in on this. The knock up is there into the Sonic Wave. Resonating strike comes through. Jaeger flashes. It'll force a flash out of Yike. And he'll get right back out with the safeguard. First blood to LDLC. But this is. Quite basic. You understand you've been delayed in your jungle clear. You understand that Lee Sin is going to get towards top side first. And while Jaeger got the early push, seems like a miscommunication between Jaeger and the rest of the team. Somewhere in that communication chain, something's broken down. LDLC take a very simple first blood top side. They do indeed, and of course we're going to have to talk about bot lane instead because big engage from Doss, Kissing now taking low, they exhausted no that, but he has no flash. Enata trying to step forward to get onto XK, but he's run out, there's the heal. He flashes into the bush, out of vision. Flash away from Nata. here comes Haru, going to try and turn it around. There is a Spectral more. it's still not enough, and Doss gets that one. It's a two for none right now, and LDLC are running away with this early game. And yet again, the LDLC bot lane absolutely 
absolutely dominant towards the bot side of the map. They only cashed in on one kill in the previous game. Now they take both Nata and Kasing down with them, delaying Haru in his jungle here as well because he has to hold the way for them. It's a disaster They've got no from summoners seven. here. There's no mana on DOS, but Haru can't quite make it work, and Kasing wasn't there quite in time, so momentary hype delayed. We'll okay, go back to this showing? replay. Wait, which one is it showing? Okay, it's gonna go towards this boss side. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is that double Zenith play. It gets right on top of Nana, and while Kasing does have that shield, you're level two. You don't have the ability to, like, even buff up everyone's uh, defenses with the stand behind me. Gets out level, doesn't have the flash, and LDLC's bot lane, as he said, just find another great window to punish X7's 2v2. And I feel like... When it comes to LDLC, we mentioned how they like to play the early games a little bit slow. Right? I would say I'm really surprised with the way that they're not only matching X7's aggression and punishing it, but they're creating their own through bot lane pressure every single time. LDLC's bot lane, Exagic and DOS have one-upped Nata and Kasim back to back in two games. And if that Aphelios was a problem later on in the previous game, now he already is. He's up CS, he's up experience, he has more gold. There's one more pickaxe. There's one pickaxe more than the two long swords that Nata has in his pocket, and this is going to be extremely problematic. And then, kind of zooming this out again, because obviously in the series, see that LDLC first game really ran away with it after a series of mistakes. It happens even earlier on in this game, and this is meant to be a series between what we consider to be tournament favorites before this. And LDLC. They went undefeated in that group stage. Of course, X7 dropped one game in the regular group stage games and then also dropped themselves that tiebreaker to Carmen Core as well, but still looked strong. But as you'll see, kind of getting such a large gap advantage between them and X7, so much more than I had expected. At least it is for now. Of course, still got a lot of this game to play out. Still only a thousand or so. Well, one and a half thousand, let's be fair at this point towards LDLC, which is significant at this point in the game, but there's a lot more to play out, and X7 do scale pretty well, but more plays like this, where Jaeger oh. gets interrupted by a flash from Ragnar, puts him into a very difficult position, gonna try and get that decimating smash. It might oh. be a one for one, though. Jaeger gets away with it, and in that 1v2, he gets a kill on the board for X7. Yes, and he gets to push the wave. You have that some zombie passive, no teleport, of course, and Ragnar means that he's still gonna be the Orn losing out even more individually. So Jaeger, though he's fallen prey to a couple go. plays, still ahead of the curve. No teleports available, that means it's just a straight dive. All the summons were burnt earlier as well. It's just dead to right. Exit kick has kicked down. That's a pretty well executed dive from X7. We saw that the top play in play. Wow, okay, yeah, you're taking that 1v2. Well, of course that means there's a number of advantage elsewhere. And X7 pull off the cross map, and it's that, that Aphelios who we praised so much in that 2v2 has a bit of help being pushed down. So there's a few things happening on the map right now because if you look at bot side, there's a huge uh, cannon wave that's going to be pushing in underneath the tower. Aphelos is not going to lose too much, especially if Dos holds the wave right here. So the Aphelos is going to be fine even with that trade because he has that one kill banked into his pocket, right? But if you look on to the top side, Yike has banked in on two kills. Now the pressure falls on him, right? Because he has the gold and he has the experience from these two kills. He is the playmaker early on, the guy onto the lease and that needs to find the kicks, that needs to find the backline access that needs to keep snowballing the victories in the early game push that they had. Well, on the top side of the map, Ragnar doesn't care if he goes down. Mm. He's playing the Orn. Doesn't matter if he has the experience or the gold. Later on, when they get to scale and play the team fights, the ornaments are going to come through. The big, chunky wall of having the Orn as a frontal is going to come through. And I feel like X7 are sort of falling behind right here. Bit of just positioning in this mid lane right now. We have got a Herald that spawned in. Yike right now on another early game impact champion. They're going to get some roams off here. You've seen the list here. Add the lease in on top of that. And Yike has yeah. made things happen early on for LDLC here. But the way that he's typically done that in my reading was, again, just kind of like a, making sure that Aker is getting into yeah. the game. It's been very different in this game where he has been getting those ganks in, getting those kills on the board early. It's been a little bit different look from what I'd uh, seen more typically from this player. Do you want to quickly go back to something that you were saying, Trouble, in terms of, like, you know, Rag doesn't really care if he's going down on that one. Normally, I'd agree, because Orn is such a cost-efficient champion. It's just in this game, when you can see that that's actually a hole breaker being built up by, the, by Jaeger on the Scion a little earlier, I wonder if you give up one more of those, whether this game becomes very, very unplayable because your side lanes just don't exist and Scion becomes too hard to displace from them. Not the easiest tank killing in a side lane 1v1 with the draft that LDLC have. 
while this was happening, of course, Yike did secure the Herald. There was no contest from X7. I'm not sure they really got all that much in the way of plate bot side, so it feels like a pretty straight up win for LDLC. Haru will now start up the Infernal Drake, though, and that might be a delayed trade. He's going to start the Infernal Dragon, especially because LDLC's bot side, one DOS was resetting, so he wasn't on the bot lane. And two, Exa Kick has been pushed underneath the tower with an entire wave. First, tower plating on the bot side is going to go to the side of X7 as well. And they do technically have numbers advantage as well, because Tempt has moved first from the mid lane. Yike does manage to dodge away from most of the CC there, takes a Dark Matter, but doesn't walk into the walls of the Event Horizon. So just zoning him out for potentially going from a steal. That's about it. There's Jaeger will take this opportunity to teleport back topside with a hull breaker first. That's it. I was just about to point that out. We have that. You know what that means? Sadly, Orn is no longer able to play this game. <laughs> like, I saw the option there. Is that the Forge Fire? Is that what that is? That's, is that... uh, that's the call of the Forge God trying well, to he'd cook up. Fire he's got the fire bummer since then. He does. Just, he does. But I mean, it's at, all, this it's point, all at this point, I mean, you are really going to struggle to hold that lane. We can see that there are a couple of individually okay. Uh, plays and trades coming in, but at this point, you are going to be stuck under your tower for the rest of the game. Well, when we were fighting over which analyst would get a hold of the Talus Trader, I feel like <laughs> I should have given it trouble after that, because clearly you can't be trusted. Um, already setting everything on fire here, both literally and graphically, as Jaeger takes up a couple of turrets. Yeah, you don't want these. He's Come just on. proxy farming at this point. He's got a, he's got a blast go. He's got to walk he away. He has to be okay. extremely careful, though, because if you look in the mid lane, Aika is pushing the lane. He starts hovering towards the top side of the map. Yike on the lease, and he's towards the top side of the map as well. And yes, even though he might get away with a kill or when the Orn and the Lee is there, add the R into the mix, add that AP damage into the mix, and you might end up going down. You yeah, definitely you, don't um, want that, especially when you're that ahead. It's, it, you, you just probably could see kind of like some public service announcement kind of advert just being like, split push responsibly. You know, you still need to have that uh, amount of... Hole breaker. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> hole, hole, what are you guys doing? Like? Hole breaker, split push responsibly. All right, right. If this you, and other this products... Is how you, is this is how you advertise patch changes. Just like random <laughs> adverts in patch notes. I'm down for this. We've got a okay. mid lane shove, though. And LDLC are all here. Temp gets stunned. Ika comes forward with the charm. But Kasing is there to try and buy some time. That will keep the mid laner alive, and now they're going to have to back out of the dive, but they're still going to get the Herald come in and secure four plates. I got hops forward, but he's safe to do so. Again, you can see the LLC uh, bring a lot of members mid, trying to secure that lane. If they get this mid out of turret, suddenly that side lane pressure gets harder to, again, push responsibly, because you're going to lose out on vision, you're going to lose out on that territory. It hasn't happened right now. There's no vision from LDLC on the other side of the river. As soon as that mid lane turret does go down, with it that low HP, you have to imagine it will do at some point. Game gets harder for X7 as much as they have the building blocks of something very strong in that sound getting ahead. And as much as you can't control Silas anymore once the mid lane tower falls, you also don't have a safe lane for your Jinx and Vega to push forward and try to get the waves. But Haru is possibly looking for Ika, doesn't have the ult. Doesn't have the ult, but there is a Spectral Morph Force to flash out of the RE. Nice little gank there from the former world champion. Okay, so now you have Flash and Vega. You can flash forward for a cage. You don't get out of that unless you have the flash yourself. So. I'll see as much as they committed a lot towards that mid lane, potentially not able to do the second part of that plan to take down that turret. And you have Demolish, you have a Holobreak, you have a Jaeger who is laughs at your structures. They're going to try and stop him from getting that auto. Does still get it. That is the fourth plate. Goes unstoppable with his own ultimate and will happily trade that out for the turret plate. What a noodle fight. I guess so. Um, <laughs> I was casting with Ducklings some of these I fights in the group stage. This. This is, uh, <laughs> it's gotten to the point because you've got all the burn damage. Not even just like the wet noodle fight. It's like a noodle pot. Like you're getting these <laughs> spicy noodles. Like, and you've got a delivery for lunch. You're you're keep throwing them out. Ducklings response was those are some very overcooked noodles. And I completely yep. agree because that is a very long yep. time you're waiting on those noodles. You know how they ready? get like more like soggy the more you cook them. At this point, like the whole pot is just like it's just noodle bush. mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Noodle porridge. What a disgusting thought I've left everyone else with that. I mean, come on. I'm sorry. We're moving away. <laughs> it's my fault. Uh, I apologize to those eating right now. You probably don't want to be anymore. Um, Going to see LDLC starting to roam towards this bot side, though, and Nata and Kasing need to be a little afraid of a dive. There's no teleports available. Yeah, and the very important thing is that there is no teleports available for X7. That means they actually need to walk through the jungle. You see how Temp needs to be so careful, okay. and he's pinging around the jungle because they don't know exactly where Yike and Aika are. And if that Vega gets caught, he will very easily go down super fast. And on the other side of the map, you see that Jaeger, you mentioned, Amira, he wants oh, to split, but he now. doesn't care too much about the teleport. Yeah, this is the right C-stage plan. Lee Sin has a lot of bursts. But here comes Kasing, they can try and turn it around. He gets the Glacial Fissure to try and turn it around. Yike now having to get out in danger as well. Those Brawn passives in the jungle could be pretty terrifying, but it's just the flash out of Haru. And that's all that's won there. Okay. X7 defend it well enough. So let's see what's happening on these side lanes. You got one tower going down on one side, and as much as I appreciate your oh, efforts right now. Is. I mean, see that happening. Let's see what happens on the bot side too. If Alios is pushing in towards that turret. 
Jaeger now in a bit of a that wet noodle fight coming towards the end of its cooking time perhaps does avoid that pillar and the bot side they are going to get the shove in and that will be gold into exit kick and we saw what he did with gold in the last game namely run okay. over every single team fight he was in so we saw a lot of things happen in the last minute focusing in on what happened in the bot side jungle this is the part of the game where it gets difficult when you lose control of mid lane you lose that vision across that jungle you've got of course a lot of vision kind of cropping up here look see if jinx has been spotted on the run you're going to have the wave pushed in here that's a whole side of the map which you don't have control on now, which means it's going to be harder to avoid fights. And you have a fellow with that amount of gold, if you're not avoiding those fights, you're certainly losing them. Massive level discrepancy here between Haru and Yai, because well, that is two levels. That is a two and oh Lee by the way, and this is the price you pay for trying to continuously make plays, especially when you're too old. That's a right, he's in a lot of trouble. And then we finish that word up correctly. As I got a little bit tongue-tied momentarily. Either way, he does get out with having to burn, I think. Is quickly enough away, but X7 onto this dragon will be their second of the game. Yike will be around, flash out of the solar flare and the zenith, but it will now come down to a smite fight secured by Haru, though, who doesn't miss that. Oh, Jaeger on the other side, side though, comes in with an unstoppable force. It's blocked out by Dos. The charm lands, they're now trying to flash away, and X7 cannot secure any kills. It is a dragon and no deaths, at least thus far. That is two dragons secured, though, and this is the win condition for X7 Sick. right now. You've stuck two of them. Kassing! He's gonna get hit by the Forge God. The door is down, goes golden. But I don't know if he's got a way out. Can he get close enough to Nanda? Throws down the exhaust oh. the Glacial oh. Fissure. Stays alive, and now the turnaround can come through. Tempt is here as well. Yike does not go down. He's shut down by Jaeger. Two already. Tempt gets Ragnar on top. Massive win for X7 as they tried to punish LDLC who go too deep. A Spectral more stuns up Dos. He's trying to get away. I can get to Neverfrost into the decimating smash. Haru is the one who secures the kill though. And X7 come out on top. And it's LDLC this time that go oh, a little too far. He's got they no end up diving. S kick is under tower. He's got himself. Okay, weapons, but no ultimate. But There's wait, a teleport there's five. More. They can try. They're going to come in a 3v1 at least for now. No mana. He's got Gravitum and Severum and not much else. They'll start walking him down towards what was their tower. Of course, it fell earlier in the game. That's and that's going to give it over, I suspect, to Nata. So that's going to be the fellows going down and revisiting what, whatever the heck happened in all of that phase of play. <laughs> you can see that again, LDLC, I think they made the right choice at the start of this. You want to force those fights. Stop X7 avoiding the 5v5s. You have a hole breaker on your side. He's not going to be the strongest team fight frontline. You lose a lot of that value when you're too close to the teammates. Jaeger, though, found a right angle to get to be a frontline whilst also not being within that hole breaker range. LDLC lose that fight and then for some reason stick oh, around for an extra part of he's it. He's got no flash, again, he's got a solar stage. flare and not a lot of damage left to him. Does survive until the primordial bursts and straight back to the Stone Age. It's a great screen for DOS. And I feel like I agree with everything you said, Nymera, but it's also, I feel like, the pressure on Yike. He cast in on these two kills very early on. True. You're playing the yeah, list. You're that playing advantage. the playmaker. Yeah. You're trying to use your advantage. You've now fallen two levels behind. You need to make a play. You need to be proactive because that leasing is as useful as he's going to be right now. He's as useful as a kick onto a very important carry. And as you can see here, I feel like it's all up to Kasim. He absorbs so much pressure. Beautiful stopwatch on the on the own horn right here. And as you can see, uh, Nata is on the side as well. Puts down vision. the jumpers. He's going to ear away onto the Viego. And once you see these resets coming through, when Yai goes down, Nata gets excited. He's able to get back into the fight. They're Pushing forward with how resets as well. Now he has the leasing, and you can see how the snowball effect begins. And again, this is an X7 where it's like, I'm gonna copy LDLC's homework, but I'm not gonna make it very obvious. And now LDLC is into pressure to push him into the jungle. X7 are playing the kiting call. Haru has the second Herald inventory. It's ever for oh. Everfrost trade. Nega had to flash out of that before he got in range for another primordial burst kill. Dos. As Dos is very deep without Again. a lot of help. He is so far up the creek, and the only paddle is the paddle in. X7 are giving to him this I, game. Don't get me wrong, this vision's important, but. You're going so far into this, and I get that LDLC. Again, want to force X7 to the fight, want to get that vision into the enemy jungle. If you're looking about what's happening across the map, they, they've got themselves in the mid lane out of turret. They have a way oh, to really? play with the vision. Oh, they're going to go straight back out. Yike will avoid the glitch. Fissure. Aika is going to throw down the ultimate into a call of the Forge God, which is swiftly stalled out by a very large the storm. Sun. Unstoppable force, not quite in range, gets charmed up, but he's so damn tanky. Event Horizon goes wide, oh, but they're all going to land. Onto Yike, who gets out. Mercury tries to a fine item. Nata, though. 
on the killing spree. Who cares how lane goes when you can start pulling off kills like that? Haru steals away the order now gets out. They can't secure the mid lane tier two, but they'll take the kill. They'll take the mid lane tier one, and they'll get out of dodge. And again, LDLC with the aggression. Ainka tries to push the top side of the map. He loses his flash. Dos tries to play aggressively to put down the vision for them on the top side of the map. Oh, he loses it. his life. Then LDLC overextend to try to make a play with Yaiko onto the Lee Sin. They get instantly punished. X7 are on point right okay, now. Okay, but where's the recovery from LDLC? Because you can see actually they're starting to move up, of course, into that top lane. That's what they tried to put their vision down. They've already taken this lane. It was a lot invested for it. At least at the back end of the play, they managed to at least get something on that top side of the map, but it's not even taken down the turret yet. Jaeger did such a great job of defending it in the laning phase, it's not even scratched yet. And what that delay cost was a teleport from Ica, and of course it's 30 seconds until the mountain sole point for X7. They're in position, Jaeger will be in a 1vx scenario, but he's got Holebreaker and a second item. They've cleared out the waves. It's gonna do so much damage back. They finally clear out the turret, but this is a bloody tanky Scion. He's gonna to try and play his way out of this one best he can gets kicked into the wall but he's buying so much time at this point he'll have a zombie afterwards as well does a lot of damage the charms comes through he goes unstoppable gets stopped up decimating smashes dashed away from and he finally falls all the while on the bot side, X7 shoving in, gonna get this mid lane tier Look two. Look onto the map right now, he stalled for so long. Both mid and bot are pushing. Mid lane tower is actually falling, and the next objective on your maps is going to be that dragon spawning because it's going to be sole point for X7. And if they were tanky to begin with, now with Mountain Soul in five minutes, they're gonna be even tankier. Oh, uh, LDLC are on a big timer. I know the Scion has become a bit of a meme oh, boy. in recent seasons, <laughs> but that was a good death. The question is, how much can you get? Oh. The LDLC are trying to, again, ratchet up the tempo, force X7 to come to them, and the they're doing it through the... the, the Nah, yeah. take can't walk forward there himself. It's the Sing that eats the char now, and Aika is on half HP. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be for him to survive this. Glacial Fisher onto Aika, but Naharu has to ultimate away with the Heartbreaker. They're going to cut the flash out of Kasing, who tried to pick, get a pick onto Aika, but... Baron is stopped, and that's about it. And serious credit to LDLC for, again, even though they've taken some bad fights, again, try and force X7 Stop away from the strong egg. parts of their composition. However, in this game, X7 are keeping themselves abreast of this pressure which LDLC are putting onto them, forcing themselves to make these decisions in the correct timing. And now X7, sole point, got themselves to huge items, got themselves a gold lead. We may be looking at LDLC's first loss in the entire tournament. They are 7-0 and thus far. They're the LFL first seed. They are from the region who are the reigning champions of the Amazon EU Masters, even if they are not the champions themselves. Kami Core playing, of course, later in the week. Either way, this is an organization with incredible pedigree from a region with incredible pedigree who have been playing with a level of class at this tournament, which made them a, a front run of the whole damn thing. X7 looking to bite back in this second game though, and a very good position to do so. And I really love what X7 is doing right now because they're putting Jaeger towards the top side of the map because they know that this is going to be the closest to Baron. But X7 does not necessarily have to push the Baron because then if they group themselves up inside the pit, then they give LDLC a big open to try and get the pick on them. All they have to do is lay down their vision, put that Scion back onto the Orn. You see the teleport onto Jaeger is going to come up really swiftly and the LDLC are back onto the so game. They're trying to get the vision towards the Baron, trying to bait X7 towards the other thing is as well, why do you take the Baron? So you can take towers. You are already taking towers because you have a sign with Holebreaker who is this far ahead. So again, part of the part of the allure of Baron is being able to close out the game. X7 are already starting to get these advantages put to each other. They don't need to threaten anything. They don't need to put themselves at risk. You already said the geography of that pit already not great when you're on red side against so much target access and everything oh, else. Me. But well, you'll see looking to still pick off X7. Find a way, because again, one pick could lead into a baron for them. They're not out yet. They are at a slight disadvantage, but to get that one pick, we'll change in a moment. It's a very dark red side jungle for X7 right now. Just trying to fight for a way in. LDC were lurking. Thank you, pr uh, observers, for the view right now. It is currently quite dark. Haru finally gets Scenic sights on Summoner's Rift. Ica could look for a bit of a pick here, but Temp will be around. I don't know how much he'd want this. Uh, looking for it, the catch the charm. Yeah, there's Yike, gonna get massive damage back out. Don't quite get the kill though! Yike is surely about to survive! Goes oh, into Taru! I can't quite go the kill! Now Temp's in trouble as well! The Korean LCK duo are dead! 
It's double over to Ica now with two members dead, including your jungler. LDLC can retreat back to Baron. And what do we say? It's the one pick, and everything can change off the next seven. They're going to be forced to go towards this Baron. I think you can let this one go. Jaeger has the ult, but LDLC, somehow, some way, they find That's their moment. In. All right, LDLC in the five versus two. Jaeger not here at this point. They're going to try and come in. in. There is the ultimate to get here in time. Charm goes wide. A lot of damage into the pit, though. Remember what Danny did over in the LCS. Can Nata do the same? But not yet. He's trying to survive as he can. Look at Exekix. Shurikens flying everywhere. Two more down. A shutdown for Yike. Jaeger gets out, but everyone else from X7 fell in that You know that what really leads into that? Remember how much effort LDLC put in towards that top lane turret just those minutes ago? He committed that teleport even after the lost fight. It leads to this vision, which leads to these picks, which leads the way back into the game for them. And that was complete impatience by Harrow right there, because he knew the lurking was happening for three minutes straight on that top side of the map. The only reason that Harrow was hovering around was because he was allowing Temp to push top side, but he's not there anymore. You do not have to walk in there. You do not have to give your life. It was Nata and Kasing in the previous game giving up their lives, giving the bound to LDLC, which LDLC stopped their, um, their, I'm, I'm out of words. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this trouble? Yeah. Uh, uh, the screen didn't tell you for you. <laughs> they wanted to stop their progress. I, I got you, there saying. we go. But it was that Baron <laughs> that stopped X7's progress and then put LDLC ahead and then they completely ended the game. And the same story could be done here, because remember what Amara said? You've got a Sire on a side lane, people are struggling to lane against the Sire, he's pushing the waves. Now you've got Baron up minions, it's much easier to shove in the Sire. Now oh, Jaeger's under the tower. Yeah, but look where the rest of X7 are, I don't think they can actually do this. Jaeger takes next to no damage from the Ari right there. And we've got about 40 seconds just over until what would be Mountain Soul for X7, but they are shoved in under their tier twos at this point, with the Baron still in full force. LDLC in full control of the map. And what this does mean is that, of course, LDLC get all those structures, they get all that gold with it, and suddenly, whereas before there were slight margins of error, which X7 were really exploiting to just avoid the full-on 5v5, not give up that first pick, not get burst out. LDLC have that oh, many more stats to do this CP, in now. Look at Ica CP, top side of there the map. He he's flanking. He's going to try and get in here, but on the other side, they're going to try and pincer Dos. the pincers. Dos taking so down low, goes down. Primordial Burst gets him. Nata is the trade out, though. And now Temp's in trouble on the other side. He's flashing away the other side, trying to get away. Exa kick is dead. And now Haru has his weapons ready to flash through. Kick from Yike, though, into Ooh. the event horizon. It's a damn close fight. Haru alive for now. Temp trying to get a hold of Ragnar, and Jaeger is still there as well. Temp trying to get away from the Bellows. Breath, Ica still alive into the Event Horizon. Double kill from that Dark Matter, and X7 win the fight. Huge fight for X7. Very clever teleport from Ica to try and get onto the flank. But Kasing manages, sorry, Nathan managed to get one kill before he died, which was so, so crucial. This is going to be Mountain Soul for X7. And even though the Baron went completely south for them, this is right now their win condition. And it is such a fine balancing act when you're going for these big flank plays. You see what they're trying to pull off with the Ari, and I'm actually going to see this in this replay. You see that Ari goes from one side of them to the other, tries to get that pincer, but X7 find the window and say, all right, we're fighting, let's go in, and the first kill is already gone. Your first reset already in effect. I mean, the only thing which stops this being a complete blowout is Nada gets picked off very, very early into oh, this play. Damn. Tempter uh, doesn't need any of these high mobility champions. What are those? He's got more than that. More than enough mobility with those two little feet of his on the Vagar. Vagar stays alive, and that's the Ooh. real big DPS which comes out of the back of this. Stick those dancing shoes on. He's not just a tiny master of evil, he's a tiny master of, of the dancing. tango as well. <laughs> Get him a tango skin. Make him join TF and Evelyn. So here's the thing right now. Nata got picked on really early into this fight. Your AD carry dies. Exakick dies in this fight. Your AD carry dies. But the problem for LDLC is you do not have any other carry with consistent damage. You've got Listen with burst AD and you've got Ari with burst AP. Whilst on the other yes, side, you've got Temp. I'm sniggering because there's an item in inventory which uh, Nymera is very proud of seeing in I'm Ari's inventory. Now, I'm not much of a librarian myself, and if I was, they would be filled complete with Magi's, but Aika has picked that one up, and you can see now with 403, thing with getting a Magi's, very cheap legendary item, gives you an extra bump of that mythic stat, and now uh, you get to chuck in an extra 15 AP onto the top of that Everfrost. Aika really trying to burst out now. All right, well, we've got ourselves now with the Mountain Soul. We've got ourselves with some interesting items. It is X7 
who probably are favored with this game state right now, but LDLC have already proven in this game they are more than willing to fight their way back in. And look at exactly how they play the fight. They've got Jaeger and Kasing sort of shielding the carries around the map and how they want to play the team fight. They're not allowing any cues to go through from the Lee any chance to go through from Aika, and the game will only become more difficult from LDLC unless they find a flank through Fog of War. And this is why someone like Sion can be so effective at that whole shielding thing you're talking about when you don't have Jace in the game. When you don't have something like a core key or another poke you see like a Zaya, right? Because you can sit there and it's like, what's the worst you're going to eat? Maybe the, the rifle Terrorists from the FLS are the one thing which you're really worried about. Outside of that, though, X7 can just sit there and say, where's your poke? You don't have any of it. You don't get to play to chunk out the sign, and the sign becomes such a Ooh. difficult thing to avoid. Trying to get that solar flare down, but Doss on the other side takes so much damage. Haru in a 1v2, happy to step forward. Now Nata's around here as well. Ragnar charging away with the searing charge, but into another event horizon. Haru has to go golden, though. He takes a lot of damage. Ragnar survives for now. Can't quite get the kill. He's into Aika. Does get it. Now needs to steal away the Orn. He's going to get back over the wall, but no. Not for a searing charging force. We'll have a reset on the ultimate to work with. Yike does get rooted on the other side, but a decimated match misses. Tempt is there, though. Event and Horizon flashed away from X again. He has to burn the heal as well. It's one death right now. Sorry, two, because of course Doss fell as well. And X7, with the jungler forced out and two members dead, have got control of the Baron. Okay. Kit. And when LDLC took their Baron and got that huge golden pocket, we were saying, okay, well, maybe those very close fights beforehand, where the first target does get away on a sliver of HP, maybe that doesn't happen anymore. Well, this is what happens when you give the Mountain Soul back in return. X7 now feel very much emboldened. It doesn't matter though, the whole breaker is deactivated on the side. He has got oh, so exactly. much HP. HP and XK. XK. So much oh, he's gone! The Primordial Burst deletes him from the rift. He is removed from the damn code of the game at this point. Ika and Yeljike on the other side. This Imperious mid-jungle from the LFL need to find some magic. Ragnar is coming in. Doss is respawned as well. So the low. HP bars are so low. It will be a smite fight at this point, surely. Can they keep Yike out of the pen? Ika stepping forward. Call of the Forge God. Tempted in trouble. Goes golden. Soul of their time now. Oh, and maybe there's... they've done it. They've stayed too long. They can't clean the Baron. Haru on the other side. Side. Can't get in. LDLC will secure Baron after this as well. That's it. Deck seven. They go and tank that Baron. All of their damage goes down. Haru's trying to find so way. He's got the ult. Doesn't have the damage. Ike is a godlike member in this game. He's 24 stacks on the Medjai's from 10 to 24 in a blink of an eye. And then suddenly. That's the Baron gone. Those are respawns, which are still pretty long from LDLC. Can, can they try and end? You've got the Jaeger. Sion with so many items, so much HP. He does have a little bit of wave clear, but it's against the Baron Creeps. X7, they were in such a commanding position. They can't end. Exakik is on the bot side of the map. True. I think they're going to be very content in taking that mid lane inhibitor tower, having a point of pressure on the map in the mid lane, and then try they to use to that power once. Okay, yeah, look, Temp can teleport. They could yep. think about going for this. They're going to step forward. They've got respawns coming through. LDLC overstayed. Now they need to be in a little bit of worry, but they won't quite manage to keep it up. Jaeger thought about looking for it. Ragnar gets that top lane tier two, and we are left with a moment to breathe here. And I am so impressed with how LDLC managed to zero things down and to say, look, this is the exact play we need to win. How do we go about getting that? And they find a way, once again, second time in this game, where again, on the brink, maybe at the, the edge of their first loss in this whole tournament, and they still find a way out to a winning scenario. Now, it's not going to be the end of the game. The second time, LDLC really hurting X7's indecision. But you've got ways that you can actually go for the Baron. Right here, the Q actually expires. So if X7 had stayed inside the pit or towards the bot side, gone for the Baron, stole it, and then maybe members can just walk towards the other side of the map, you see Haru and Kansing would 100% be able to sort of all through, and then you have Kasing fallen as well. You would sacrifice two of your members, yes, but then you would have Baron on three. And I feel like X7 and Barons is just curse. And uh, speaking about uh, that last fight, person who was on the edge of that screen was the Ari. 24 stacks now, all it takes is one, one good fight with the Magi's and suddenly you are an incredible threat. Ari struggles to do damage unless you really do snowball in this game. Magi's helps you do that even more so. And suddenly X7 needs to be very careful of who's caught on those sides. Elders are unsafe. Yike steps away from what would have been a decimating smash that could have put him in trouble. Ragnar gets that wave shoved in, but X7 are here in Ragnar. the river. Ica on flank, though. Here comes Exekick trying to stay away. 
Jaeger throws down the Death Sphinx, man. Watch for Ragnar. Watch for Ragnar on the other side. Gets a charm in. That's a huge amount Haru. of damage. Haru taken so low. Staying alive for now. But X7 so damn low. They have to retreat out. Ragnar and Exit kick over the wall. Aika staying alive. Takes some damage, though, from a Winter's Bite. Now needs to be in danger from this Scion. Gets slowed. Elder Dragon taken down low. But Nata at such a low HP bar. Needs to be afraid. Needs to be so scared. Haru at 5% HP. If that LDOC can win this fight with the health bars, if they can keep that jungler away can't get in elder dragon secured and the burns start flying through wings flared and they are going to wipe the fight on top of it all that's a game for ldlc and they move to match point in this series and in this game in particular where x7 found themselves a team comp which maybe could outscale maybe could fight later into the game find themselves an advantage find themselves sold but ldlc see the path to victory. They see it not just once, they almost give up that advantage. They have to do it twice, and they do it. Find themselves a path to victory. What exceptional team fighting. What an exceptional Baron hold from LDLC to prevent X7 from taking over the game. They are now at 2-0. They are now one game away from making semi-finals. They are still undefeated. 8-0 right now at the Amazon European Masters. And we called LDLC to be really good at one particular playstyle, which is be passive in the early game, scale into the late, and team fight yourself to victory. They played an aggressive early game, 2-0 and zero onto Yike. He continuously was looking for picks together with Aika, and he feels like so far, we've been saying, Tempt and Haru, potentially the strongest mid-jungle duo that we have in Amazon European Masters. I think... Aika and Yike are making a strong case for themselves because so far they've played so well. Just amazing stuff right now. My voice needs to hold on for at least one more game though. Five and games? I, I'm hoping Five so. Games. Got it. It's the reverse sweep. It's coming. I still believe NLC Copium coming through from the NLC. <laughs> Casters right now holding on, but LDLC looks so damn strong. They're the first seed from the LFL for a region right now. Either way. We are still going to move on to a break here. LDLC on to match point on the verge of making the semi-finals. Before we analyze that game, though, make sure to check out our song of the day, Not Yours by Wave Wave and Lisa. We, while we wait for the next game, we'll see you in a minute or two.